So H2O is water, right? H2O. Everything starts with water vapor going up in the atmosphere, and clouds and precipitation, and understanding the hydrologic cycle and how it impacts everything. Um, I also like to call it homes to oceans. Because when you have a home with a little bit of water and you start understanding the balance and the importance of that aquatic component on your property, it's going to help you understand the ocean. And if you could understand the ocean, then you understand planet Earth. Uh, Ed, yes. thank you so much for making the time coming all the way out here and helping us with this project. It really, really means a lot to me. So, yeah, I, I don't want to just fetishize your knowledge and your wisdom. <laughs> I also want to get to know you a little bit. Nice. Yes. Uh, so how did you get into this work? Well, first of all, what do you do? Let's let's let the audience know what it, what exactly it is so you do. What, what do I do? So my background's in zoology. Zoology. I was, when I was a little boy, I knew immediately I wanted to go into some sort of a biological field. And that was because I spent my days here out in nature looking for frogs and snakes and coming home covered in mud and, you know, coming home late. My mom's like, where are you at? And I'm, you know, just off in the woods and the creeks with all my buddies and stuff like that. So I was always fascinated by nature. Um, loved all the different documentaries that were out at the time, you know, the Jacques Cousteau's and the Wild, uh, Wild America and all these different really cool shows. My favorite place to go as a boy with my parents um, was to the zoo, going to the aquarium, Brookfield Zoo, Lincoln Park Zoo, Shedd Aquarium. Um, so I just loved not only the animals, but I loved the habitats that they were, that they lived in. So when it was time for me to go to school, I was like, I have to go something in biology. I studied in freshwater was my, really my, 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 my sweet spot. So I love looking at all the different life that actually occurs inside water. Um, I started when I graduated, I started my, my master's degree in marine biology and coastal zone management. I wanted to do coastal zone type stuff around the country. That job market dried up late 80s, so I was offered a job as an environmental chemist, and I worked in a recycling facility. So we were actually taking hazardous waste, we were blending it, and we were turning it into a secondary fuel source that was used to cure concrete. So concrete production actually has a very high carbon footprint because you have to mine the uh, the limestone, and you have to bake it to create the, the, the proper chemical reaction, but it's very energy intensive. So we were taking waste product, we would blend it to make something usable, but we also had to check for all the different hazardous compounds found in it. So it was kind of a cool job, but I, I realized quickly, I plateaued and I'm like, I'm gonna be doing the same tests for the next 30 years. I'm like, I, I'm not gonna be fulfilled with this. So I found Aquascape, they were doing a talk at a local library at the time um, about backyard water features. And I was honestly, I was blown away by the message of working with nature. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I, I fell in love with it. I started with Greg, um, right in the very beginning. And because it was a very brand new industry, we didn't have a lot of, like all the products that we're using here were not even in existence. So these were things that we created. So we have patents on these things. So it was me playing around with Greg and we were coming up with different ideas and we we're constantly reinventing things and figuring out until we came up with, after many years, a really good working model. Um, and then from there, we started doing so. Now, fast forward what I do now, I, I do product development with our product development team. I do marketing. I do vlogs. I do training. Um, I do what we call an Aquascape Academy, Aquascape University. So we want to share all this information. So for doing it for 30 years, I've, I've come across a wide variety of scenarios. I've worked all over the world. I've I worked in Europe. I worked in Africa, South America, Australia, Canada, the United States. So I've done projects all over the place. And each place is totally different. And that's what I love about it is, um, you know, like the concept of, of STEM learning right now is very big. Science, technology, engineering, and math. I like doing STEAM, which is science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Because what we do, there is an artistic component to it. So we're trying to make it, we're using biomimicry techniques, we're creating living ecosystems, but we're putting our own um, artistic thoughts into it and our interpretation of nature. So we're kind of blending all these different disciplines to create these living systems. And once we kind of jumpstart them and they, they, they become alive, they actually get better and better and better with time. So it's like once you, you just have to think all the little pieces through, uh, which is what I love about it. I love problem solving. Um, I know it slowed us down here a lot. You know, we had a bunch of problems popping up, you know, stuff falling in on us, groundwater popping up and springs and all that stuff. But honestly, that's kind of what gets me up in the line. I love tackling those, those challenges because I know I can learn from it, 
But not only do I learn from it, I could share that information with future people that might be getting into this or tackling a project similar to this on their own. So you truly are a pond professor in that you have the knowledge, the understanding, but then also the creative uh, design experience so that you can take the palette of nature and paint with it and play with it use mainly using water so you're designing pond systems water ecosystems using the natural proclivity of nature to do what it does and then you shape it and move it and place it so that it does it in the most efficient and the most ecologically exactly uh beneficial way exactly nature has a tendency to change and evolve and decay and and it doesn't always uh fit our our lifestyle <laughs> so you know like for example the pond here you know you're talking about this this pond is at a certain uh stage of life it's aging yes and you know as we all do we start to feel little kinks and creaks in our in our bones and maybe you exercise or maybe you do something to intervene yes with the natural entropy so what are you doing that is helping, uh, you know, and I, and I hesitate to say helping nature, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. I really do believe that we, if we can maximize our design imprint mm-hmm. as opposed to minimizing our footprint, mm-hmm. as, which is the environmentalist's way of saying, stay away, if we could do more beneficial design, we can actually help nature stay healthier longer. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree. And so... So these ponds, even though you have a natural spring here, these were built ponds. So we could see that they created a series of terraces here, and they dug areas out to allow pooling areas to allow the water to kind of pool up for agricultural purposes, livestock, etc. cetera. Um, but when they did that, um, just by creating these levees, um, because it wasn't a holistic type of a design, you're going to get um, the eutrophication process that you just described, so that natural aging process. And they had open areas, and... The soil wants to erode, and you're getting like all the leaves completely. Even though I love all, all you know, the trees here are just in, incredible, and they're they're flourishing because it's a saturated soil condition. But now you're taking all this nutrient um, out of the soil, so you're taking all that uh, uh, the nitrogen, phosphorus, the carbon stores, etc. You're bringing it up inside of the trees. You're growing all this incredible biomass, you know, through the process of photosynthesis. We're creating carbohydrates and sugars, but as those leaves shed and drop. If they don't have anywhere to go, they fall down to the bottom of the pond and, and they make this big, thick um, sediment layer. And that sediment layer is that that aging process. So what happens is you have this big volume of water. It is beautiful in the beginning. So crystal clear water, spring fed, etc. But what happens is we have so much biomass going in, there's not enough um, consumers of that, bio, of, of that compound down in the bottom. So what happens is it continues to, to build up on top of itself. So the deeper water is going to be cold. It's going to be clearer. Um, you're going to have a thermocline, so you're going to have that cold water, which is more dense on the bottom, and then you have water layer on top. But what happens when that sediment gets higher and higher and higher? Now the sunlight starts hitting the sediments on the bottom, and you start getting algae blooms. Um, the water temperature gets warm. Warmer water doesn't hold as much dissolved oxygen. So now you kind of see this shift where you may have had high-quality fish inside the ponds, now it's going to be catfish. It's going to be rough fish that can handle low dissolved oxygen situations. Um, so what we want to do is rejuvenate that, rejuvenate the system. We want to take those sediments and pump that nutrient rich water into our well infiltration system. Start feeding the flora. Start feeding the plants and all the little microorganisms and the microbes that are going to start consuming that material. But then what happens is we take this organic sludge, and now you start having small animals feed on it. That becomes food for tilapia. That becomes food for other small fish. And it starts, now we start taking that material and we start moving it back through the food chain. So we're recycling that material and making it active again. And then it's going to recycle and come back down into these ponds and we're just going to keep consuming that. So the water quality, like an exercise program that you mentioned, the water quality is going to get better and better with time, just like our bodies are going to react and get more efficient when we start to do the necessary work to, to make that. And, you know, a, a lot of people look at these kind of pond designs and, and it feels out of reach. It feels expensive and it often reserved for, the, you know, those those big um, mansions that have all the babbling brooks or the waterfalls 
or you know, or maybe uh, a mall or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but what's the argument? I feel like you know, the one thing we can all agree on in this country is infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Why are cities using this kind of design to actually help improve their water systems, to help invest a little in creating these ecosystems that are ultimately exponentially beneficial not only to the ecosystem around, but also to creating clean water, for example, or we we could use an upgrade in our design thinking yeah. in terms of where we get our water and how we actually clean it and uh, how we take care of the environment in a holistic way. Uh, we're starting to see a shift, which is nice. So we're starting to see a lot of that traditional engineering and infrastructure work that has been done the same way for decades. We're starting to see some of these green infrastructure concepts being implemented. Um, I've been involved in multiple projects using grant money to filter stormwater, um, to take um, um, front field developments where we're taking out there where they removed old factories in urbanized environments, put up new coffee shops with condos above. So kind of high density type of living, but we're recycling water off of the roofs. And all that water is being utilized on the property for irrigation, as well as just the aesthetic beauty of it. I mean, there are tons and tons of studies that have been done um, of how people, how there is an instantaneous drop in your heart weight, and you just have the view of water around. So there's something kind of, you know, and I love, you know, you were talking some philosophy things the other night. I love that because, you know, when, when you think of human development, it's only been the past 50 to 75 years where we've had this disconnect. We've become more modernized we don't even know if i want to use that word um but um we we've we've become disconnected from the land but to go back another thousand years before that hunters and gatherers right here on this brock there yeah. area they probably found these springs and the water quality was going to be a thousand times better than the river not far from here because it's kept bubbling up right out of the ground so our it's hardwired inside of us to be near healthy water our bodies are actually, the compounds inside of our bodies are, are mimic the ocean. I mean, it's the same mixture of compounds and minerals and things like that. So it's like we, we have this unique biochemical reaction that happens when we can buy it. So I just love talking about that. And, and the number one destination place in the world for people is aquatic dust. Well, people go to the coast and fishing and boating, the snorkeling, scuba diving, surfing, you name it. And that's where people want to spend their time because of this unique symbiotic relationship that actually occurs. So when we start thinking and reinventing cities and we start layering in actual river systems, I, I, I've done things for parks where it's uh, open for kids and now all of a sudden you have uh, educational components, but it's not sterilized water. And I think that's the key. So we want to create water the way nature intended because nature wants life. We want, you know, from an engineering st standpoint, everybody's like, we want to chlorinate it. We want to kill everything. That does not exist in nature. Like, does like it? Like, nature wants stuff. Um, in certain uh, in certain generations, some some balance. So we just want to get that restorative balance, but by having these things, and I, and we're starting to see a shift. We're seeing some of these new um, architects and engineers, and they're thinking outside the box, and they're looking at water and saying, instead of it being a liability where you have all rainwater coming down and storm water, and it's like, just get the water out of here as quick as possible. I don't want water in my house. Out of sight, out of mind. It's like, well, no, yeah. well, it's an incredible resource. Let's filter it on site, <laughs> reuse it, put it to work for us. We get that holistic benefit that, the, you know, just the relaxation. You know, we're here at Zen Turtle for a reason, right? I mean, it's like it creates that, that calming feeling. But if we can create these little micro pockets of this stuff, I mean, the benefits are incredible. Um, I, I have um, an acronym that I came up with a few years ago. Um, so H2O is water, right? H2O, o uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Um, I also like to call it homes to oceans because when you have a home with a little bit of water and you start understanding the balance and the importance of that aquatic component on your property, it's going to help you understand the ocean. And if you could understand the ocean, and you understand planet Earth because, like, all everything starts with water vapor going up in the atmosphere and clouds and precipitation and understanding the hydrologic cycle and how it impacts everything. Yes, yes. <laughs> and you can you can help where you're at. Absolutely. And I take this very seriously here at and Suhi living at Earth Speed. We have this opportunity and this responsibility to steward this land. 
And so when water comes onto our property, it is incumbent upon us to do something with it, clean it, so that when it ends up flowing back into the river or evaporating to the air, we've done our job to at least do what we can to make it the most beneficial until it passes down to the next piece of land or ultimately into the ocean. Because, you know, people want to save the oceans over there, but the oceans over there start right here. And that doesn't mean just, you know, if you have land, but did you buy something in plastic? Did you throw it away or did you recycle it? Um, Maybe you just decided to put in a filtration system in your home so you're not buying plastic. This is a really exciting thing for me because I think, you you mentioned it, education. I really want to make this a, a, a place for people to come to learn about these systems. So when you're showing us all about all, all of how this, uh, the, you know, the bones of this yeah. system, love to get some kids up here and teach them all about that. So you, you're going to come back and help us or conduct yeah. the class professor? <laughs> Absolutely. I'd be honored.